from the deep dark reaches of Star Trek Online comes Nicodus and Greebug with another episode of Fleet Action Report. Hello and welcome to Fleet Action Report, episode 102. Thanks for watching. I'm Nicodus. I'm Greebug. And we have a guest with us today. I'm Tabitha. Hello there. Welcome, Tabby. Hey. We're glad that you're with us. This would be Tabitha from Tabby Gaming. Tabitha Games. Tabitha Games. Come on, Nicodus. That it's is like you not don't what it is. No I looked that up and it came up as Tabby Gaming. You is are not looking at the right channel. Okay. Like you like oh, look oh. In, look in the chat. You'll see Tabitha Games. I stand corrected. <laughs> there, there oh, you go. Not there, standing. There's standing. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm sitting. You're probably not standing. I, I, it would be good to stand up right now. Anyway, I have a uh, loaf of a cat. Um, she's a very pretty loaf, very fluffy, and she's well aware of it. <laughs> Let's start with Greebog. How's your week been? Uh, my week's been uh, interesting. I, I got some tips and, and suggestions on how to do. A, a different type of control build and I've been trying it out and have been enjoying it. It's me being in a tiny, tiny Nova. Like, when I say tiny, I, I could all, I, yeah, it's tiny. <laughs> I did not realize how tiny, tiny Novas were. They're about the size of a Defiant if I understand correctly from some of the details I've seen. So. Shorter than one of my nacelles. As we can see from the from the screen there, as as, as Nicodus shows up beside me and yeah. Oh, and don't pay attention to that secondary frame. That is not Nicodus down there. Oh yeah, yeah. I've given up my oh. my normal spot for Tabitha this week. Well, here here we go. This this way it'll be accurate. Now we have Tabitha in the big screen, and I'm just the wee one. So Aww. other than a new build, um, what else you been up to? Uh, I played some uh, uh, the Evil Dead game with some friends. Um, I probably I, I died. Know anything about we that. lost. Um, I um, also played some Supreme Commander Two with them too. It, it, that that that's a fun game. That one Old we game. didn't lose. Still fun. <laughs> yes, and and once again, you're like, wait, how many? Units do you have? Yeah, I didn't even get involved in the fighting. I, I got attacked once, and the rest of it was you raffle stomping the map. Well, no, no. Well, and Born Gear, who, who was nuking the map. Well, that too, yeah. I didn't I, even I, get to, to do that. <laughs> I set up a wall of defenses on one side. You set up a wall on the other, and... He got to play safety, and which meant he he went nuke option because that's the way he rolled. Anyway, my my week's been good. Uh, unfortunately, no RP. It was Father's Day. I I thought I'd let the fathers in the group have a day, you know, and, and spend time with their kids and loved ones, um, you know. And uh, outside of that, uh, been been breaking in a new tank in WoW. Um, well, I sh I shouldn't say new. He, he he normally tanks off and on when he can, but because of his real life schedule, he he's kind of been just a backup tank. He he's gotten to learn some of the fights and has he seemed to enjoy it from what it sounded like. But uh, yeah, that, that's my week. How's your week been? Which one? Who wants to go next? You next, oh, Nicholas. I'll I'll take this one. Um. My week has primarily been Evil Dead the game. I, I've i I've really never been much of a shooter player. I, I mean, I had my days with Call of Duty and uh, Destiny and whatnot, but that's not generally my thing. But when I do do it, I tend to play first-person shooters, not over-the-shoulder thirds. Um, and I've never played one of these uh, asymmetrical survival games before until this one. And I'm finding that I really like it. Like I, I spent almost six hours straight yesterday doing nothing but playing that game. 
Uh, it has pretty thoroughly sucked me in, and it is a lot of fun. That being said, I have neglected the other games that I'm playing recently, so no Final Fantasy update, no Diablo 3 update. Um, yeah, it's it's been eating my life. I have, I have spent a little bit of time on STO, primarily on my new player challenge character. Excuse me, I keep getting choked up. On my new player challenge character and a little bit here on Katis. I don't know. Something about my build is seems off. I'm not... I don't seem to be blowing stuff up a, as well as I have in the past. And I, I don't know if something has changed, if this is part of one of the features going on with the game, like your traits being offloaded. And I don't know. Maybe maybe putting my build together, something hasn't clicked right, but I, I keep tweaking it to see what else I can come up with. But other than that, it's been pretty good. Tabby, do you want to give us an update? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, well, in preparation for this episode, I've gotten my uh, lovely tank build here ready. Um, it's mostly a budget build with some with some sh with a couple of shinies put onto it. And no sooner did I get everything put together today as I uh, just some random person uh, invited me to a group and I thought it was like one of the people that I was chatting with like inviting me to a group to like help me test everything out. No, it was just a random passerby because suddenly I found myself on the Briar Patch PvP map with somebody shooting at me. And so um, here I am suddenly in PvP with uh, like unexpected PvP. And so I, I of course started fighting back, and uh, and well, he didn't kill me. So I get a whisper, and it's like I underestimated you. Brought my weakest ship, and I'm like, oh, I'm in PV. That was another player attacking me, not an NPC. So I messaged the person that was helping with the build. And I'm like, is that you? to pull me in the pvp map and he's like no i'm like oh okay and so the uh the the the, the player comes back and in a stronger ship and he starts attacking me again and and uh so i'm like okay and well he completely fails to kill me again and well i he tried three three more times and failed so he went a total of 0 for 4 against me and on the fourth attempt i actually assimilated his ship because i've got that um that uh that nanoparticle cloud console and like just before he died i hit the console and it assimilated his ship and then and he so rage quit right no, he, he, uh, he, uh, they, they message me. He's like, I give up. I've, I've still got the message right, like right here in front of me in a screenshot. I give up. You have some consoles that the more you are hit, the more you regain hull and shields. Well played. <laughs> Nicely done. I, I gotta say, I'm looking forward to learning about this build. So, um, you got anything else you want to tell us about or? We we good to move on. Well, I went into my very first ISA, or I think it was an ISA. Well, I went into my very first um, infected space with Augie with this build, and um, I pulled about eighty k being a redundant tank. So I think I did okay. Cheers. Because there was already another tank there, so I was an unexpected redundant tank, and I still did like seventy-five k. Excellent. Back to you, Graybug. All right, so we, we now we're gonna go to what's going on this week in STO. Um, they they did a live sub, yeah, lifetime sub sale. It, it already started, but the. They only gave like two days for the fifty percent off, so unfortunately, that is over. Um, so you still have until the July twenty fifth to get a hundred dollars off. So if you're still looking for that and that's still within your price range, uh, you have until then to to uh, get pick up a lifetime sub.
Uh, okay, but... I guess that's me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm a little slow on the uptake today. So we are still holding the line at Pavo. This event will run from now until June 28th. Um, so just a day over a, a week left here. Um, 14 days of progress to earn the reward. So if you have not started this yet, you don't have enough time to get it. Although you could do it for the next eight days, get a fairly hefty discount, and then do the buyout. The reward is the Coalition Repulsor Armor. Uh, this is just a standalone armor piece. It is not part of a set, but it does come with three costume unlocks. So even if you don't use the armor, you can still pick up that look if it's something you like. Uh, there's a short coat version, a long coat version, and I forget what the third piece is. Anybody else want to help me out? I don't have it in front of me. Uh, I suppose I suppose I could though. I mean, we, we, let's see. pull it up and, and, and maybe if it actually says in there, there it is. All, all it says is that it grants you a tailor unlock of the Coalition Repulsor armor. Okay, so this is based off one of the new outfits they come up with for the newest episode. Ray Yeet. Um, yeah, Ray Yeet wears it, and you can you can go from there. Anyway, so you don't have to wear it to get that look if it's a, an appearance that you like. You just have to unlock it. Um, I think that's it for holding the line. And the Mud's Gotten Carried Away bundle is coming to PC here on the 23rd. Uh, but it's we we already talked a little bit about it uh, last week because it went to council first. Uh, the fifty percent off sale will be from the twenty third until July seventh. Uh, so buy it then and not after then. Oh, I mean, um, to me, most of the mud bundles are only of value or within value when they are on that fifty percent sale. That's just my personal opinion because. Even at fifty percent, it's one hundred and fifty dollars. So, um, it comes with the four carriers: the Zindi Aquatic. Uh, then there's a Tholian Dorogumo Herald and, and Jim Hadar Dreadnought carrier. You know, I, th I think uh, a few of our uh, content creators did have done videos on which are the best ships to grab out of that bundle. Yes. There are videos. Go go to YouTube. Go go check out. Uh, well, I mean, I think they've all might have done a video, uh, as I know I've seen more than one. So, check out YouTube. Augie, uh, or augmented dictator games. These two, Stu seventeen oh one, Mad Dog Mikey. I mean, they're they're all got some good content, and I'm probably forgetting other content creators that you can check out on YouTube. That's it. And I, that is uh, it for the news. Um, for those that are watching, you'll notice I have Tabitha front and center now in, in the stream. So uh, it, it's now. Right. So we are going to pass this over to Tabitha. She is going to detail how we can copy her tank build that she was just talking about that apparently won her an unexpected PvP match. Surprise PvP is apparently the best PvP. Because uh, the random random person attacked me and could not could not beat me, so uh, I've I've got at least uh, one battle test under my belt. Hey, it works for me, and we may get to see this live here in a couple weeks when we do our own uh, anniversary PvP episode. Oh, that's gonna be fun. More on that later. <laughs> Go ahead, take the mic. It's all yours. All right. So the first thing that I wanted to go, one of the th things that I wanted to go for was my set bonuses. Um, I'm going to go ahead and cover those. That way, when I get to the set bonus pieces, um, those will kind of be included. But I went, for, uh, I'm, uh, I went for pieces that gave me the Lorca's Ambition two seat, uh, two two piece set that gives a um, crit severity buff that stacks. Uh, I'm going with a disruptor build here, which of uh, which of course disruptors they give a um, team uh, a team wide uh, damage resistance de uh, or a target damage resistance debuff. 
And so being a disruptor, I went with the House Martok Skirmisher uh, two set. So I'm, I'm going to have the uh, the 360 on the back, uh, the 360 beam on the back, and the console. And um, usually, folks uh, with the uh, with the Tilly set, with the Discovery set, they go with the warp and the shields to get the two piece. But with the tank set up, I'm going for the three piece of the Discovery. And um, I went with the impulse warp and shields. Though later on, I'm probably going to switch to the deflector warp and shields that way I can put the competitive engine back on to help me keep with the uh, speedy DPS better. But what that gives me is, uh, well, the House Martok gives me more crit, more accuracy, and the uh, the the Stamets Tilly field modifications from the Discovery. Uh, the two set gives do nothing last forever, which is a 120% Hull regen passive and the three set gives you mycelial lightning uh, your first weapon attack against each target fires a bolt of energy at them dealing electrical damage scaling with your maximum hull so as a tank your maximum hull is going to be high and so that's going to do quite a bit of damage on your first shot on each target helping you to get that snap aggro Sounds so, like a good, uh, good setup so far. Yup. So for my front now on the front, you'll notice I've got these um, spiral the spiral wave disruptor beam arrays. Uh, those come off of uh, pretty much any Cardassian ship. Uh, you buy any Cardassian ship, it unlocks them in the lithium store, and you can just load up on them. Uh, they cost uh, about forty five hundred. Or 45k dilithium each, and then you can just upgrade them. And uh, the cool thing about the spiral wave disruptors is they give you the disruptor debuff as well as the phaser beam debuff. So you get the damage resistant debuff on your targets as well as the chance for the system offline. And of course, I've got my dark matter quantum torpedo to uh to give me the two piece uh Lorca's ambition. And there's my three piece of the discovery, my uh elite feet elite fleet intervention proto matter, my colony deflector, which is pretty much standard on most of your DPS setups. Um, that's probably gonna get swapped out for the discovery one. So like I said earlier, so that I can put the competitive engines back on give me a little bit more speed boost keep keeping up with the uppity dps uppity um, dps <laughs> uppity dps yes fair enough uh on the aft i've got the terran task force disruptor beam um you craft that through the terran task force reputation branch four it gives you the d disruptor damage uh, disruptor damage and the uh, the 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 disruptor debuff, but it also gives you the stacking radiation dot the the wither, the withering radiation. And then uh, over here, I've got the experimental Romulan disruptor, which is available through New Romulus Tier Four, which gives you the disruptor uh, debuff plus the uh, plus the um, plus the uh, plasma weapon dot debuff on your target. Well, a chance for the um, the debuff. And of course, here you've got your Disruptor Omni and the House Martok Omni to complete the weapon setup. Of course, here I've got the uh, your standard equipment, the um, energy amplifier i'm still looking into setting up all the different devices that's still one of the categories that i'm exploring there's still more than i need to learn how to craft from learning missions but uh, the red matter capacitor is easily gotten from the phoenix store uh, plus 25 all power levels for 30 seconds and then the the energy amplifier i'm pretty sure that was learned from a mission and there's there's a couple others that you want to learn that you can get the patterns 
from the mission from missions and easily craft them. All right, getting into the uh, the consoles, all the fun bits here. For tactical consoles, the, uh, most DPS often run with those uh, with those damage consoles. So the first thing you'll notice, I'm not running with those. I've got these uh, energetic proto matter matrix infusers from the uh, from the fleet colony. And what those do is they give you a uh, chance to gain a stack of a hull shield heal whenever you activate a special firing mode for energy weapons. And that's a purely survivability. And uh, one thing that you'll notice in my um, weapon skills is I've got my, my, of course, I've got my fire at will. I've got my torpedo spread, but I've also got a cannon rapid fire that does absolutely nothing. But the reason I've got that is just as another firing mode to help trigger the hull and shield healing from the uh, protomatter proto matrix infuser. But then uh, there's my house Martok defensive con uh, configuration to complete the two piece of the Martok set. Uh, the Nausicaan siphon capacitor, which is available from a mission, which is a uh, pretty much a must have for any disruptor build. Gives you a massive chunk of disruptor damage. Here, uh, maxed out at uh, Epic 15, see it gives you uh, about 26% disruptor damage. And as far as the universal consoles go, there's that uh, dispersing nanoprobe assimilator that I was talking about that I um, assimilated that uh, PVP person through. I love that console. Really fun. <laughs> <laughs> In addition to that effect, of course, I mean, uh, gra grabbing um, grabbing uh, foes as they go down, you get hull capacity and starship control expertise. And of course, that hull capacity, that percent base hull capacity goes into so many other things. Because, I mean, uh, just uh, the percent base hull capacity just kind of scales up with everything else. Then here we've got the sensory suppression burst. It gives you ox power, crit chance, but it also gives you a team-wide placate and crit hit buff. And of course, um, t uh, t uh, and of course, that's going to help your team out a great deal. And of course, a team-wide placate is going to help you with your own threat management. Now, wouldn't that be bad for a tank build because it's team-wide, so it would placate you as well, right? It does not placate you. Okay. That's good, then. As far as I know, this is one of those things that I'm still learning about, is, uh, is like all of the intricate effects of this. Uh, yeah, to player in hangar pets and summons within 20 kilometers, placate foes within 10 kilometers for 20 seconds. So it placates foes, not friends. Hey, okay, gotcha. So I, I, I sit corrected on this one. And of course, here we have approaching agony, which may look like an odd choice, given that it's a... Uh, phaser console on a disruptor build, but uh, you've got a 1.5% crit chance off of it. And when you trigger it, it gives you a big, uh, a massive AOE phaser damage field, AOE. And so, and uh, also the, um, that leash that gives a plus five, uh, plus five fight flight speed and turn rate, 
the the benefits of that outweigh just uh, alone outweigh the the damage type bonus. Uh, like yeah, like Rebug said in chat, it's one of those consoles. It's so good that you uh, that it it surpasses the damage type. Kind of like the uh, Domino or the DPRM. Exactly. Of of course, here I've got the uh, the M6 computer, which is easily gotten off of a tier three chip. Uh, you can. Uh, by the Temporal Escort for 75,000 dilithium from the Federation ship vendor. Um, it gives you the M6 computer, which is pretty much a standard for most of your builds. Um, so this is a uh, this is a solid console that you can pick up relatively cheaply, and that, that doesn't really that doesn't really back, break the bank. But it's pretty much a uh, it's it's primarily a DPS console though. Um, it does have the some CDR or oh, cooldown reduction on it, but it's primarily uh, primarily there just for offensive. Of course, this one is a very important one to note. The universal hull image the the hull image refractors make you pretty much like practically invincible especially combined with every everything else plus 20 percent all damage uh incoming heals exceeding hull capacity instead apply temporary hit points for 30 seconds so all the healing that you do to yourself like uh as you get healing from your protomatter matrix infusers and all your self-healing abilities everything that is in excess of your hull capacity instead gives you temporary hit points for 30 seconds so you are constantly generating temporary health uh, uh one thing to note on it is that it has a clicky ability that you never ever ever want to click as a tank Reason being that the clicky ability is a cloak. And what happens when you cloak? You lose all threat. Exactly. Okay, that makes sense then. I was going to ask. I'm glad you covered that. Yup. That's how you troll and the DPS. I mean, yeah, if you want to if you want to troll your team, by all means, go in there, grab threat on everything, get everything angry at you, then hit your hull image reflect for refractors and peace out. Seems like a really interesting way to maybe anger a team or to grief a team that's angered you, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then here is another staple of survivability, the ablative hazard shielding off the Arbiter. Now, the Arbiter, like if you have the, ch like if you only have like one sea store ship to get, the Arbiter is like one of the ones to consider because it not only does it give you the ablative hazard shielding, which is like one of, the, which is a great survivability console. But it also gives you the best in sh best in slot energy weapon trait, which is emergency weapon cycle, which we'll be covering there. Uh, emergency weapon cycle is including it included in pretty much just like every weapons energy weapons build, and so not only is the Arbiter itself a solid ship, the Arbiter battle cruiser, but it gives you a good defensive console. And it gives you a best in uh, a best in slot trait. So if you have a chance to grab the arbiter, definitely grab it. I agree. I came to the arbiter late, but it it's worth grabbing. But um, oh, I didn't cover the source of the uh, other ones, the other consoles. But the uh, nanoprobe assimilator came off the uh, the twenty twenty two Borg resurgence featured event. Your sensor of suspension burst came off of the uh, Jirak Alliance carrier, which was from the 12 year anniversary event. Uh, approaching Agony comes as a lockbox console. 
Uh, and I did cover the M6 computer. And the whole image refractors is another lockbox. So like three of the like three of these were free from events. One is from a C store ship and a couple lockbox, and then uh, then your Martok and your Nausicaan are from missions. So that's really not a bad not a bad setup. So now I'm going to go ahead and go into the traits. Uh, uh, some of these traits are premium, but a lot of them are budget. When I was when I was setting up this tank build, uh, I, I I tried to kind of consider like because I mean I myself am on a limited budget myself. Uh, the ship is a fleet uh, is a fleet ship. It's the uh, fleet exploration cruiser. So, uh, uh, so once you hit max level, um, you don't even have to spend C store credits. You can uh, you you can spend you can research uh, five fleet modules from Reputation, spend it on the fleet exploration cruiser, and have yourself a T six tanking ship without any money. And uh, some of these are going to be premium traits, but most of them are going to be budget. But here we have Give Your All, which is uh, which requires level 15 in engineering school, easily attainable for free. Just takes a little bit of time. You get damage reduction from using engineering abilities. Of course, you're going to be in using engineering abilities constantly, and so it gives you um, uh, gives you a chance to dodge incoming damage whenever you use an engineering ability. Now, this one was a very pricey one, but also very worth it. The Boimler effect. Everybody's talking about the Boimler effect, and it's kind of become the new meta. Um, I was lucky enough to get my hands on this one because of a very, very generous donation. But uh, pretty much a 17.5% chance to recover the recharge time of all other bridge officer abilities up to their shared category cooldown. Pretty much lets you drop the, inf the famous uh, ox to bat uh, style. Which pretty much I've been using up until yesterday. I think that one ran about... 70, 70 million on the auction house, so on the on the exchange. So it's not like completely out of range. I mean, it's it's not going to completely break you. It's still attainable for a free to play player. Just got to save up for a while. Uh, superior teching. Uh, this is available to all players. Uh, you get regular techie for free, and you can upgrade it at K13. Uh, this gives you ship hull, uh, starship hull restoration uh, and regeneration. Bulkhead technician, other, another one that all players get for free, and gives you maximum hull hit points. Imposing presence, an absolute must for tanking given to you for free gives you threat bonus and outgoing hull healing that outgoing hull healing isn't much of a bonus because you're mostly healing yourself but that 25 percent threat generation is going to be a big help oh yeah and what uh Griebog said uh, you can get boimler effect from the exchange uh, from the lobby store i think it's what 200 if i remember Yep, yes. 250 or like you said 70 million on the exchange yeah. and you can get low buy uh, low buy from the event campaigns like the event campaigns will uh, will eventually like grant you chunks of low buy crystals so you can you can uh, like you can do the event campaigns and earn enough low buy to buy the blind miller effect so it's not out of reach for a free-to-play player 
All right, next up we have superior beam weapon training. Uh, all players get beam weapon training for free, and then you can upgrade superior to superior beam weapon training at K13. Uh, that one's easy, just a flat out bonus to beam weapon damage, more damage, more death, more aggro. Superior accurate, uh, same, same as the previous ones. Uh, you get accurate for free, upgraded at K13. Redirected armor plating. Uh, this is a free one from the Renegades Regret mission. Um, it gives you damage resistant when being shot from outside your frontal arc. This one's actually pretty low on the tier list of usefulness. But given that I'm working with budget traits here, um, it's still it's still pretty useful um, for what I have access to. But plus 30 to all damage resist rating for five seconds after being shot from your from not your front. That's not bad. Uh, here we have Living Hull, which is a reward from the Midnight mission. So that one is a free one. Uh, if you drop below 50% hull, it gives you a, uh, it gives you a hull. Oh, wait, no, that's not this one. Uh, this one gives you 15% hull regeneration while in combat, uh, doubled outside of combat. So whenever you're in combat, you get 15% hull regen, 30% whenever you're out of combat. Good deal. This is the other one that I was that I started to describe. Auto automatic hull heal when below fifty percent. Your hull drops below fifty percent. You you heal a bunch. Can happen once per every minute and a half. Now your starship hull restoration does affect the amount that it recovers. So, like, if, if, if you start to take a little bit too much damage, it's a little bit of a cushion. Now, here's the, tra now here's the traits that do start to get pricey, though. Starship traits. Now, here's that one that I was talking about off the Arbiter, the Emergency Weapon Cycle. Uh, on a, uh, Pretty much whenever you activate Emergency Power to Weapons, which is pretty much... Uh, going to be in most of your beam energy builds um, is uh, yeah, whenever you activate emergency power to weapons you get uh, half off of your weapon cost and uh, firing cycle haste for 30 seconds that's one of the staple abilities of your beam weapon builds history will remember this one comes off of the several ones, actually. The Legendary Ambassador Intel Support Cruiser, the Narenda Support Cruiser, Legendary Vortra Command Support Battle Cruiser, or the Varal Support Battle Cruiser. I picked this one up for a really good deal off of a charity package that was like $10 of, uh, last year. They gave the both the Varal and the Narendra. And so for like 10 bucks, I was able to get those two ships that gave me this history will remember trait. And it gives you uh, st stacking, damage, uh, maximum hit points, and regen. And pretty much uh, it stacks up to 30, and for every foe that hits you, you get 1% damage, 1% regen, 1% maximum hull, and 10% threat generation, up to 30 stacks until you leave the map. So that's going to be, that's going to be, a, especially on a long map, that's going to be a lot of, a lot of extra buff. Palm before the storm. This is another. This is off of the uh, the Cardassian Gamora Intel flight deck carrier. So if you want to get the spiral wave disruptors, 
grab the Intel Gamora flight deck carrier. You will also get the calm before the storm trait. Knock out two, two, uh, two ships with one stone. That, that's how it goes, right? Yes, yes. Two, two, two ships, one stone. Okay. Bounce them across the holes. <laughs> but pretty much the way this one works is while you're in combat, you gain a stack of a calm buff every two seconds. Each stack gives you uh, damage resistance. At 10 stacks, you gain storm for 20 seconds, which gives you fire and cycle haste and officer recharge. And so then you burn through that storm buff and then you start gaining calm stacks again and all during uh, and all during combat you just cycle bef between calm and storm of course this one is off of the gagarin entwined tactical matrices another one of the staple of all of your energy weapon builds Whenever you activate Torpedo Spread, it activates uh, Fire at Will and Scatter Volley. And then whenever you activate Fire at Will or Scatter Volley, it applies Torpedo Spread, swap, swapping back and forth. Pretty much lets you keep, uh, if I remember right, like 100% uptime on Fire at Will. which as a tank is very important. Uh, carrier wave shield hacking. Uh, this one I just put on here tonight. This is a last minute addition. Um, activating tractor beam or, or any intelligence bridge officer ability takes enemy shields offline for a brief duration. Oh, thank you, Susan. So the, the premise on this one is uh, you grab the target with a, uh, with a tractor beam and you knock their shields offline while you're pummeling them. And it also gives the tractor beam a kinetic damage, uh, kinetic damage buff, plus 30% damage, but that's not really the important part. The important part is you're a tank and you've just grabbed your target, knocked their shields offline while the DPS is pummeling them. And so for the last trait, which is my T6X trait uh, from having upgraded the ship. Actually, I should say the uh, the carrier wave shield hacking, I forgot to mention, is a, is, is a very modest, like, uh, I think it's a lockbox trait, yes. but it's like 4 million on the exchange. So it's actually really, really cheap to get. Until now. Now, now, now you put a run on it gonna go way up and now, now i've put a run it now it's gonna become very very popular so y'all can um so if like uh so anybody who sells it if you can just send a um send a cut of the profits to me <laughs> i won't come and destroy you with my awesome tank ship that you're now telling everybody how to copy she, she's leaving I'm something out pilot. i'll give you that all right, and so for my uh, for my final trait, the T six X for for being a uh, an upgraded ship, I picked unconventional tactics, which is available to everyone. Uh, activating brace for impact increases your damage for a short period of time, and so pretty much I put brace for impact in my spam bar since I never really use it for anything else, and it just pretty much uh, when I uh, it. It just pops whenever it's off cooldown, and it gives me a damage buff. All right, and the last of our traits are the space reputation traits. We've got Tyler's duality, which is uh, passively increasing critical chance based on hull capacity and so from everything that we've seen we've seen how we've got things like massively boosting percent of hull capacity 
So having my Starship critical chance based on hull capacity is going to uh, is going to raise that up pretty well. Now it does max out at 75, 7.5% 7 at 200,000, but still a kind of a guaranteed 7.5% is nice to have. Um, advanced targeting systems, uh, increased crit severity, plus 25 crit severity. That's kind of um, that's kind of a gimme. Precision, critical hit chance, pretty much critical hit chance and critical hit severity are two shoe wins for any ability. Uh, energy refrequencer uh, heals hull when dealing damage. Um, uh, synergy with all of our other abilities that work off of hull healing and also the fact that we're taking ideally we are taking all of the damage in the in the TFO needing all of the heals we can get receive 10% of our outgoing damage as a hull heal now it does only trigger uh, up to five times per second and it has a cap but hey everything every little bit counts And then Chrono Capacitor Array, um, I picked this one up to further to to help Boimler effect um, further uh, further recharge bridge officer abilities. Uh, give me another nine point four percent bridge officer ability recharge speed. And uh, well, I did forget uh, active space. I don't have any note, uh, notes on this one. But these are kind of basic for everybody. Um, I don't know. I don't know that these differ that much. Uh, your biomolecular shield generator, sensor interference platform uh, for when you've got a little bit too much heat on you. Uh, quantum singularity manipulation. I'm not sure why this one is recommended because well. It does cloak you, but it does let you keep firing. So it doesn't seem like you lose threat even though you're cloaked. So I, I haven't played with it a lot. This one is on my future exploration and learning list. Uh, refract refracting Tetrion Cascade, AOE dam chain Tetrion damage. Then uh, that good for uh, good for AOE, good for threat. I was going to ask about the forced talon. Uh, I didn't know if that was a good one for tanking because uh, faces the target towards the user, pulls target to within 0.5 kilometers, and then, yeah, it's. Hmm, I'm damage. not sure. I have. I didn't see that one in the list. I'd have it's... to. I'd have to make a, a note to look at that. Okay. It's I'm... essentially a taunt, but it's really only good for single targets. Yeah. And it sounds like your build is more of an AOE threat build. Yeah, that well, I mean, most of the uh, pretty much the idea behind tanking in Star Trek Online is um, is pretty much to fire uh, fire beams in as many directions as possible and get as many things shooting at you as possible. Uh, so it's, um, it, there really aren't uh, many, uh, I mean, there's a few mechanisms for like snap taunt, but really it's more about grabbing, be, uh, becoming the loudest, most obnoxious thing in the room. So Nicodus would be really good at this. Oh wait, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, it might actually help for, you know, the way I play. <laughs> yes, I have a habit of leaving everybody behind. I All know. Right. As we've derailed Tavi. Oh, please. It's fine. It's fine. We're all fine here. How are you? We're going to have company. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong universe. Just don't shoot my mic. I'm trying to. I'm trying to do a thing here. All 
right, so for my uh, for my stations, um, I I put my uh, my um, this is a fleet cruiser. I've got a uni uh, universal ensign, a tactical uh, lieutenant commander, a engineering commander, an engineering command lieutenant commander, and a science lieutenant. So for my Universal Ensign, I went ahead and put my Torpedo Spread there. And then uh, Chemosite Laced Weaponry, uh, I have for AoE. Pretty much it, it, when, whenever you activate it, it enhances your weapons to do AoE on, uh, to, you know, for, on targets. And of course, there's my Cannon's Rapid Fire for, the, um, for, the, for, the, for, for just the dummy firing mode to trigger my Tactical Consoles. The healing off my tactical consoles and then my fire at will three which is the my prime staple of my uh, threat generation <clears throat> uh, engineering team which is pretty much a filler ability um, it does some shield heal or it does some whole heal it re does some uh, deep uh, like repairing of disabled systems debuffs and everything but it's not that useful. Um, if you can, if there's something else you want to put in there, that's fine. You're good. I went ahead and slotted a single ox to bat in here because I was, I was finding that I still needed a little bit more um, cooldown recovery. So I went like a. Instead of the two copies of Oxbat, I went ahead and put one on there. So I haven't run with it yet to see what it's going to feel like, but we're, we're going to see. Of course, Emergency Power to Weapons 3. And Reverse Shield Polarity is one of the staples, uh, is one of the staple abilities of a tank. Um, pretty much target self. Two minute cooldown, and uh, whenever taking energy damage to any shield facing, you heal a percentage of the damage to that facing for 24 seconds. So, uh, for so for every two minutes, you can pretty much take um, a high percentage of your incoming damage as shield heals. Unless you're fighting Borg, in which shields don't matter. Hmm. Ain't the rules, the, the rules are made up and the shields don't matter anyway. Uh, then in the engineering commander station, uh, I've got emergency power to engines because I'm always trying to keep up with the uppity DPS. Uh, also, that synergizes with another ability, uh, with a, one of the duty officers, which you will see uh, shortly. Uh, and then for the command abilities, I've got Overwhelm Emitters, which um, all energy damage, uh, to, which marks, uh, which marks foes. Uh, pretty much, uh, uh, pretty, uh, pretty much, uh, it, uh, thirty percent of damage as shield regen to allies, thirty percent of damage as shield drain to foes. And then suppression barrage, one of the uh, one of the main uh, meta traits going on right now. Your weapon suppress targets hit for twenty seconds. Suppresses uh, targets hit, outgoing damage, flight speed, turn rate, accuracy. Everything you'd expect from a name like suppression barrage. Then of course we come down here for tractor beam, which thinner, which uh, goes hand in hand with that ability. Uh, for, what was the name of it? The carrier wave shield hacking. You see, uh, you see a ship you don't like, a big bad ship you don't like. It's your uh, pr usually your primary target, like on our. Uh, like on our Pavo TFO, when the dreadnoughts come in, you hit the tread, hit the dreadnought with the tractor beam. Goodbye, shields. It's almost like you're, uh, it's almost like you're the Borg. Then uh, hazard emitters, which is a, um, which is a good, uh, decent shield heal, and it 
gives you a bonus to damage resistance and it while it's up it re continuously removes hazard debuffs and dots for the 15 seconds that it's up it only has a 41 second cooldown so and so usually with your cooldown recovery you can probably have a you can probably have a pretty good uptime on that and have a almost always up shield uh, shield heal and cleanse and that does it for our uh, ship stations station oh wait station station uh, we'll go over the duty officers real quick because there's a couple of synergies there um, I've got a couple of standards, um, stacking crit severity, stacking crit chance. You find those on most of your DPS energy builds. Uh, here's one of the big reasons I have, uh, I mean, in addition to keep, keeping up with the uppity DPS, um, I have the emergency power to engines recharges evasive maneuvers when emergency power to engines is activated. So pretty much whenever I activate emergency power to engines, it resets the cooldown on evasive maneuvers, giving me much more maneuverability out of this big ol' freaking ship. Uh, and of course, here are here is I've got two on the, or I've got uh, I've got my ten of ten, recharge of bridge officer abilities reduced after ox to bat. Pretty much one of the three duty officers I could have, put in here for the ox to bat build. I've got it in there to help out Boimlers a little bit. Uh, here I've got one uh, damage control engineer to reduce the recharge time of emergency power to substance and or a chance to recharge reduce the recharge time for emergency power to subsystems and then fabrication engineer um, this one is a very expensive one to try and get a better than green a better than uncommon version of but increases the duration of reverse shield polarity, that uh, that two minute cooldown one. Um, I think you can uh, you you can actually get the duration on reverse shield polarity pretty high with the um, with the higher level ones. And then with the cooldown reductions, you can have a pretty high uptime on reverse shield polarity. And that covers the, um, covers, the, well, oh, energy levels, though. I almost forgot the energy levels. Energy levels. 100 on weapons. Uh, I'm going with a 15 on shields, a 15 on engines, and a 70 on, um, on the last one. Aux auxiliary. Yeah, auxiliary. Because that affects your space abilities and a bunch of other stuff. Yup. Okay. Um, as always, with any build that we feature, actually any show that we do, but especially the builds, when uh, Greebog uploads this to our YouTube channel, he will also upload the show notes. Um, so you guys will have... You know, if you want to go back over any of the information, you'll have it all right in front of you written out. So you don't have to, like, watch the show and take notes. Um, Tabitha, thank you so much for doing that. I do not have a tank build. So at all. Um, I got nothing. So this will be very helpful. I I kind of want to do that. I mean, I know we're going to start running elites together once you know, we have a group that's that's set for it. But you never know when somebody like we'll try to do something and somebody won't be here or somebody will have to cut out early. So having multiple people with similar builds so who can fill in would be nice. Yeah. So I'm I'm planning on copying uh Grebog's control build and then copying your tank build. 
uh, if I ever end up with enough EC to actually make that happen. Although I already have Boimler, so there is that. Augie was um, talking about some power settings. So do, do we still have time? We can run a, a TFO quick, uh, show it off in, in action. Yeah, I we know can make we're that pushing happen. time. We can make that happen real quick. I'll queue us up. Uh, you guys need the daily, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, let me up the difficulty on this one level. We'll make it a little bit more challenging. If it actually pops, if it if it doesn't pop here in a minute, I'll switch it to the lower level. We had we were lucky enough to have it pop pretty quick. The well, we had a full team though, didn't we? Probably. Now that I'm thinking about it, I think that was the day we had five people. Anybody want to hop in for this? Let me ask that. Anybody in chat want to uh, pop in here with us? Uh, Tabby, thank you for putting all that together and coming on and, and just, yeah, talking about the tank build. I appreciate it. Yeah, yes, thank you. And uh, yeah, and it was, I learned a lot putting this together and I will be the first to admit that I am still learning a lot. This is like my very first attempt at putting a tank together. And so uh, I am in I am in Augie's Discord asking questions. I'm in uh, I'm working with Mad Dog Mikey, asking questions. And like I uh, like I just learned from Augie in chat that my power levels are off. So I'm going to be fixing that uh, as soon as I can. Augie but, does. Uh, but, but yeah, to respond uh, to Susan, Augie does some pretty crazy builds. Yeah. But yeah, I'm really, really excited about starting uh, starting the learning process of this tanking and uh, figuring all this out. Oops, it help if I would type the right thing here. It is uh, not. It's not letting me invite you without a handle. What's your character name, Susan? Anybody? Uh, I also tried to invite Midnight Age, but he has not responded. You could also do a friend request and see about getting Susan that way. <laughs> Though Susan would have to trust you the friend you right you're and just I'm some rando creeper on, on the internet i love the the shield the way it makes the reflective uh chroma appearance for your ship tabby Yes, I love the temporal defense set. Pretty much, this is um, the the, uh, the the temporal defense shield, engines, and deflector in the cosmetic slot. Okay, there we go.
Okay, got that invite. Now let's see. Anybody in fleet? Nope, just the four of us. Just the four of us. All right, I'll go ahead and queue us back up then. Your ship's still bigger than mine. Look at this. I just, I, I, that's like the smallest one I have um, currently. So I jumped in that, but yeah, no luck. If you have a Defiant, it might be, it might be smaller. I have, the only Defiant I have is tier four. I never bought what him. What is tier. the smallest non-small craft ship in the game? Maybe the jellyfish? I do have that one. Uh, that one might actually be smaller than yours. No, not that one. Peril. As Peril. there's a the Borg ship above us. Boom, there we go. The Borg making you have feelings of inadequacy. No. I can fit inside the hangar bay, that's all. You'd probably blow him up anyway. Okay. This is not my favorite uh, TFO, but here we go. I figured we'd work on our uh, budget builds again next week. Rebog, you good with that? Sure. I need to figure out where, where that captain is. Enemy ships approaching. On an attack. All right, pull threat off of me. I'll get Gamma. So we have all all the types this time. Yep. I will For, run down the uh, front when we get to have a choice. Okay. Because what, yeah, the... what is the proper... So we actually got that from Augie the other day. So the, the back row needs to be all tack. Um, the Me middle inner row needs to be tack. And the front row needs to be science. The only place that engineering goes is in the middle on the outside. I think that might have been goofy. I'm You're sure right. Augie would You're be right. okay that with was... it too. Sorry. Sorry, Augie. My bad. You're right. It was goofball. Because one time I was in a group with all engineers. Oh, boy. Yeah, oh, if you can boy. go all tactical, go all tactical. Because that will serve you best. It's just typically you're not going to have enough tactical players to get all the, the satellites to all one, all tactical. Picking up multiple enemy signals on sensors. Get ready. Okay, so we got Simon and Chanel over there. Um, Tabby, you should be able to get that. I'll go help Simon. You can pull them in. You can rack them up and I'll knock them down. Should have brought my other ship though. As they get pulled, one group gets pulled over to the gravity well of the other group. Yeah, I saw that. That's what you get for having those really long gravity wells. just not letting me go with these tractor beams.
the ship's blowing up and it's still flowing towards your uh, gravity well. It's fine. I suppose that's good though, because when it blows up, it might take some of its friends out. I still get ever so slightly annoyed these days when, because uh, they they put a, a countdown on uh, Omega attack pattern Omega, so you can't use it instantly anymore. Every time you get held, especially by tractor beam, it automatically gives you a countdown. Still got 80 seconds on this round. Fine. second count. Well, we, we are all over again. Annihilating these groups. Oh, I know. It's just funny to me. Because uh, there, it's an infinite number, or at least I'm pretty sure it seems to be. Yeah. Oh shoot, I'm facing the wrong way. Alright. Who told you to point that way? Uh, I thought they'd beam in on, or warp in on the other side. But they didn't, they came this way. Satellite upgrades are ne Ah, Satellite there we go. Upgrade. So all tactical. If we can do it, but I, or as I don't many know. As that... we can. few that we didn't get. Alpha's got two engineers. Uh, we got, we didn't do too bad. I only did one science. So. We didn't do terrible. All right, here we go. This time with bosses. Once more with feeling. <laughs> That's a Buffy episode. It is. It's one of the best Buffy episodes out there. The enemy flagships are coming to attack. I actually just watched that not that long ago.
assimilated you. Oh, did you do the ugly duckling maneuver? No. I got a sticks on our side. <laughs> Ooh. I am getting hit hard down here. Yeah, me too. I wasn't paying attention to my shields. Well, that was embarrassing. Alpha might become defended, undefended here in a minute. See, and this is why we're not ready for Elite yet. I'm by myself down here. I was over there, but somebody had to come to Beta. I'm the little ship that could, or, or couldn't, I don't know. So far I could. Where did your, you had another partner over there, where did they go? Uh, uh, the same place my Jem'Hadar Dreadnoughts kept going. That's fair. <laughs> Oh, apparently they're over here with me. Which is weird, because I thought I was doing pretty good when I actually pay attention to stuff. I'm doing alright. Oh, that's better. See, it helps when you actually, you know, pay attention to your shield grid. I'm sure it's fine. Oh, it's just the tractor beams they keep hitting me with over and over again. Shield generator gamma is at seventy-five percent. Uh oh, somebody's at seventy-five percent. Oh, Tabby. Yes. What were your uh, activated abilities that you used? Uh, sorry, the active space reputations. I could look, but I'm fighting. Pretty much the standard. High molecular shield generator, deploy sense of in sensor interference platform, quantum okay. singularity manipulation, and refracting Tetrion cascade. Okay, what does that uh, satellite actually do? Hey, we're done. Wait, what was the question? The the satellite that you summon, what uh, what is the it benefit taunts. of that? It taunts? Yep. Okay, that's fair. So, like, if you ever take too much heat, uh, it's, uh, it's good for being like, oh... Give something, you know, give them something else to shoot at well for a minute. We'll that went well. 
I could have gone better. I gotta I gotta look at my build. Something's not right with it, but I'll get it figured out. Or, you know, I'll do something crazy like ask for help. Crazy talk. All right, so next week we're going to work on our budget builds for the new player challenge characters. Um, and then Thursday, this Thursday, and next Thursday, we're going to have a fleet fun night that all are welcome to. Um, it's not really a fleet fun night anymore, but it's habit that I call it that. Well. Um, so fun um, night. We're going to do a fun night. Live streamed fun night. So if you want to join us, you are more than welcome to join us. And here in about three weeks, uh, we are going to have our anniversary PvP episode, and everyone's invited to that as well. We we really need a total of 10 people, or as close to that as we can get. So you're all welcome to uh, come along and join in the fun and, you know, blow me up a few times. Did I miss anything, Grebog or Tabitha? I think we're good. I mean, you're definitely you're definitely spot on on the you blowing up part. That was mean. Oh, I, well. You know what's what's funny is so the last time we did that, I actually managed to blow you up a couple times. I'm not so sure I can do that anymore. I, yeah, yeah, I'm like if she, yeah, if she's in her tank build. Uh, good luck. I like I said, I'm gonna have to take a look at mine and see uh see what I can do to tweak it. But uh, anyway, as always, I will leave everybody with the words of Q. See you out there. Live long and prosper. Bye, y'all. <laughs>